Hi, my name is Manish Dalwadi, and I am a second year MBA student at the Tuck School of Business and a Center for Digital Strategies fellow. It's my pleasure to welcome Peter Vossall, VP and Distinguished Engineer at Amazon.com to Dartmouth College. Peter, welcome, and thank you so much for taking the time to sit down with us today. Thank you, Manish. So let's go right into it. Um, Peter, could you tell us a little bit about your background? How did you get interested in cloud technologies? And tell us a little bit about what you're doing at Amazon today. Sure, so I graduated from Dartmouth uh, with a computer science degree and have spent the last 20 years in industry building software um, with a heavy emphasis on building large-scale distributed systems. Um, Amazon recruited me to um, help take Amazon to the next level. Amazon in very early days had um, a fairly simple architecture like any you know, web startup at that time and knew that with the, the growth that they were seeing, they needed to fundamentally change the architecture and hired me a bunch, as well as a bunch of other engineers to help um, begin to solve that problem. And so I spent uh, probably the first four or five years that I was at Amazon um, going directly after that problem, which was how do you take a, a fairly um, closed, coupled, two-tier system and scale it so that not only will the system scale, but will software development scale, and at the same time keep our systems highly available. So today we see a lot of um, sort of small startups leveraging like cloud services like AWS, um, and the value prop is pretty clear for these guys, right? It's low upfront costs and the ability to scale. But how about large and medium firms that have existing software infrastructure, maybe things like SAP or Hyperion? What are some of the things we should be thinking about in terms of their adoption patterns? It can be hard for uh, a, a, an established company with an established set of technology, you might even call it legacy software, to, to, make, to make that leap to a fundamentally different kind of hosting or infrastructure paradigm. Mm -hmm. And often, what you see in kind of the early phases of an enterprise starting to use the cloud is it will be kind of new, new initiatives. It might even be a Skunkworks project mm -hmm. that some developers, you know, run into, um, run into a wall trying to get hardware from their IT department. Just decides, oh, I can just build this on Amazon Web Services. And so, one thing to keep in mind is you're not necessarily going to move everything at once. We we have put a lot of energy into moving some of our core assets, including our retail website, onto AWS. And it's not, um, it's, it's definitely very doable, but it requires, requires some effort. Um, the thing to, 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 to really focus on, I think, for an enterprise is look for those obvious opportunities where you're building afresh or you're taking an existing system and for whatever reason going and doing some major renovations, because that's when it's kind of the most easy to look at do I want to build this on right. different infrastructure? We talk about it as, you know, there's like, do you do a lift and shift of what you have today, or do you build from the ground up? And building from the ground up lets you leverage everything um, kind of on the first day, whereas lift and shift can be more difficult. Um, so currently there's a debate about the true value of the cloud to customers. Um, some people are saying that it's all about cost efficiency, and others are saying that it's about enabling innovation. What are your thoughts on this debate? You know, the, the, the elasticity and the ability to, you know, dial up capacity, dial down capacity as you need it, um, the pay-as-you-go model, it invariably leads to, to lower costs. You know, we, we see, and we see it at Amazon too, the, the average utilization of a server in a traditional data center is, is so low that if the finance people actually went in and looked to see how their capital <laughs> was <laughs> working for them, they would be very sad. Um, and so, with you know, with auto scaling or other um, other techniques to 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 take advantage of the elasticity within AWS, definitely can drive down the costs. Mm -hmm. At the same time, it can enable innovation. When you take advantage of the cloud offering, where those same people that have done it for Amazon all along are now doing that for for you as a, as a third party developer, you get a lot more time now to devote to thinking about how you can solve the the end problem for your customer. Right. And as, as a recent consumer of AWS as a developer at Amazon, building the, um, the back end for Amazon Silk, it's, I've actually been able to get a sort of a visceral feel for this, of you wake up in the morning thinking, I need to go and build 
a solution for problem X, and by the end of the day, taking advantage of some of the, the building blocks within AWS, I actually have you know, a solution up and running. Okay. You know, maybe I needed the ability to index a broad data set, store you know, large files, um, build some monitoring around it, and, and then also maybe be able to have a uh, version history for the files so that if someone changes it, I, I can know what it changed from. Like those are all things that just you get for free um, in terms of the feature set from AWS, and it's, it's pretty compelling. Yeah. Okay, how about security? So a lot, of a lot of companies out there are sort of delaying their cloud adoption plans because of security concerns. Is this just sort of like an artifact of a nascent technology, or is there like a fundamental issue here that needs to be addressed? Well, there, there is a fundamental issue, which is the kind of the operating parameters from when you run your systems on-premise to where you're running them on the cloud, they change. And mm -hmm. it's not to say that they get better or worse, they're just different. And so there's kind of a different set of concerns that you need to worry about. Um, I think some of the security issues just come from uh, a natural hesitation to want to be an early adopter to, to you know, a fundamentally different model. And I think that's typical. You know, you, you see that in, in fact, we, we saw that with, with you know, e-commerce back in the early days. But, you know, in the early days, customers were, they weren't really sure about sharing their credit card information online. It just didn't, it didn't right. feel right. And so it was up to the e-commerce retailers, like Amazon, to make customers comfortable with that and also be patient and, and build mechanisms so that even if it wasn't um, as convenient, customers that wanted to take a different path to providing Amazon their credit card, they could do that in a way that was more comfortable for them. And so I think a lot of the things that we focused on in AWS beyond um, like basically the, you know, securing the core product have been some of those enablers. You know, the, the virtual private cloud product that I talked about um, that in a way can be a stepping stone for some enterprises where they can, they can run in their data center but also extend their network into the cloud and still put controls around it and they can be more comfortable. Um, the other important thing is we provide the, the primitives to build a secure application, and those primitives are secure, and we've been audited by you know, a bunch of different auditors under um, different auditing regimes to prove that um, our infrastructure is secure. But that doesn't mean that whatever you build on top of our infrastructure is going to be secure. Right. There's a lot of security best practices around credential management and um, you know, penetration testing your software, um, making sure that when you are running your software on one of our instances that you've put the right network firewalling into place. And we make that easy for you by defaulting a complete firewall that's impenetrable and then you open it up as you, as you see fit. But you know, some of those things may be new for an enterprise that previously used what some people might call a crustacean security model where it's hard on the outside and soft on the inside. The cloud kind of forces you to make sure that you're not soft on the inside. And you could argue that for for some applications, for some companies, that shift might actually make them more secure because they've had to be more thoughtful. They, they, they couldn't have relied on that, that hard shell around see, um, yeah. kind of their existing data center, existing model. Okay, great. Well, Peter, on behalf of the Center for Digital Strategies, thank you so much for sitting down with us today. Uh, this has been Manish Dawadi for the Center for Digital Strategies.